Hi, my name is Lisa Nichols, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to crystallize a solid to purify it. I'm going to start with some impure acetanilid, which has a bunch of junk in it. It should be a nice pure white solid, but it looks kind of grungy, and it has some insoluble impurities in there as well. So in this process, I'm going to um, do the normal crystallization, but also include a charcoal step and a hot filtration. So here I've assembled some materials I'll need. I've uh, dispensed about four grams of my impure acetanilid into a weigh boat. It's a pretty large scale, so I'm going to use 125 ml Erlenmeyer flasks and a pretty big beaker. My plan is to use water as my solvent, and so I'm going to pour about 200 ml or so water into the beaker. And it's not a bad idea to use more water than you think you might need. Uh, next, I'm going to add a few boiling stones to that water because I plan on bringing it to a boil on the hot plate. Boiling stones are little pieces of rock that help you have a smooth, controlled boil. They are places where the bubbles can start, and so it prevents there from being any bumps or large sort of boiling explosions that might happen. Next, I'm going to put my impure solid, which has all this junk in it, into the, one of the Erlenmeyer flasks. Since there's quite a bit of solid here, I'm going to use a spatula to help me transfer that to the flask. I'm planning a hot filtration, so I'm now connecting a ring clamp to a ring stand, and into that I'm going to put a short stemmed funnel. I also want to check the height and just see if this is going to work out for my filter flask. Yeah, that looks about right. So I was just testing the height, but I don't want to put my flask there yet because I don't want to heat an empty flask. And next you need a piece of filter paper to stick into the funnel. And although you could use just sort of a normal folded uh, filter paper, if you're going to do hot filtration, it's best to have as much surface area as possible. And so I like to use a fluted filter paper. So fold the filter paper into, uh, I think that's eight, and then you want to fold it into sixteenths. I basically just used my, my folds that were along um, when I folded it into eights to guide me, but more or less I just want to alternate back and forth so that eventually at the end I get something that looks like an accordion. So you'll see it here in a second. So just something like that, like that's about right. And then you'll take that and open it up. And that has a lot of surfaces. And then that just goes into the funnel waiting for later. My water has come to a controlled boil on the hot plate. And so I'm gonna use some silicone mitts to grab it and add some of that to the impure solid. Because my scale is so large, I'm going to add quite a bit of water, maybe 50 milliliters or so. And then I'll put that onto the hot plate and heat it to a boil. To control the boiling, I'm going to add a boiling stick, which is just a wood splint to the flask. And these act in the same way as the boiling chips. In this case, you could use boiling chips as well. I'm just using the wood splint for variety just to show different methods. After some time, the water in the flask will start to boil and it may start dissolving the solid. You want to every once in a while swirl it around and see how it's going. But likely you're going to have to add more solvent. So our goal is to add the minimum amount of solvent, in this case water, that we need in order to get that solid to completely dissolve. Do you notice how it's still chunky? So that means that we need more solvent. Um, sometimes the solutions also foam quite a bit, so you do want to uh, kind of control the heat and you might need to turn it down if it gets too frothy. But you'll add the solvent in portions until the solid completely dissolves. So something that acetanilid does, and some other things do as well, is that it has a melting point that is not too different from the boiling point of the solvent. It's not too much higher than 100. So what actually happens with acetanilid is it oils out, or instead of just staying as a solid, it actually liquefies and turns into 
oily, liquidy droplets. So there is a bunch of junk here too, like insoluble impurities. So those are never going to dissolve. But if you see sort of like these big blobs, like things that almost look like a lava lamp, you know, so like these oily droplets, those are your compounds. Actually, I can see them near the top. You see how they're dripping down, like they're falling like little globules. So that stuff you have to dissolve as well. That's your quote solid. It's just liquefied. So you need to dissolve your compound completely. If it oils out, you need to dissolve the oily droplets or the blobs. It can be tough to distinguish between insoluble impurities and oily droplets. So, but you keep on adding the solvent in portions until you think you've just dissolved the compound. I'm going to add just one more portion and then I think all the oily stuff is going to dissolve. And there's just a lot of extra junk in this stuff, but I don't think that that is compound that's undissolved. I think it just need it's insoluble impurities. So we're going to call that good. So moving on, I am going to get my filter flask ready. So I can put my Erlenmeyer flask or my filter flask underneath my already prepared funnel. And then I'm going to add a few milliliters, five milliliters, 10 milliliters or so of the hot solvent or the water through the funnel. And then my goal is for that whole funnel to get hot and steamy. So I want that water to boil and get the whole thing hot. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some charcoal to absorb some impurities. You want to be cautious with how much charcoal you use because it can absorb your compound as well, but it is really good at getting rid of colored impurities. So start with a very small tip of the spatula and add it to your solution. This didn't seem to make any difference in the color, so I'm going to add a little more. And what I'm trying to do is try to get rid of that faint pink color that was present in the solution. It seems like in this case I need even more. But start with small amounts and you might want to add it until the solution looks grayish. But we're trying to get rid of the color. Here I think I've added enough. So then I'm going to bring the flask and put it back on the hot plate and bring that back to a boil. I'm ready to do the hot filtration now. I'm going to first take out that boiling stick because it just gets in the way. And then I'll use my silicone mitts and grab my solution and pour it into the funnel in portions. Whenever I'm not pouring, I'm going to put the solution back on the hot plate and keep everything hot. And I'll just keep on pouring in portions until the whole thing gets filtered. And when it's done filtering and your flask is empty, don't put the empty flask back on the hot plate because you don't want to heat an empty flask. That can be dangerous. So instead put that on the side on the countertop. And then you do want to inspect the funnel and see if everything is uh, draining well and if there are any solids that are left over. If the flask, the sorry, the funnel wasn't very hot, then you can sometimes get crystallization happening in the funnel. And that would uh, create a loss of yield if you, because eventually you just throw the filter paper away um, and it also could clog the funnel. So if you do see any bits of shininess, which is sometimes hard to judge, but if you see any bits of shininess, then you want to do a rinse. So let's say that I see a little bit of uh, shiny speckly crystals up there. Then take some of your hot solvent and pour in just a little bit of solvent to rinse that away. That's not necessary. You don't always have to do that. It's only if you see something. 
Okay, so it's been completely filtered and now I'm done. So I can lift up my funnel and then grab onto the hot flask and take it off to the side. Crystallization works the best when it's done slowly. And so to help that, you should put your, your hot flask on top of some folded paper towels. And that insulates the system and prevents too much energy from draining out into the, the countertop. Then also cover the mouth of the flask with a watch glass. As the solution cools, crystals should just start forming on their own, but it's not uncommon for them to have some trouble. So if you see murkiness or if you feel the glass and it's hot, but it's not that hot, then you might want to initiate crystallization. Take a glass stirring rod and scratch the bottom of the flask. This will get the crystals to start growing. As you start seeing flecks of sparkly stuff, you know that it's working. Once the crystals are showing up and you see them, the process is on its way and you can leave it and let it do its thing. And let the mixture come completely to room temperature. For a large volume like this, it might take 20 minutes for that to happen, but more and more crystals will form as, you, as it cools. And once the mixture has come to room temperature, then you wanna further the crystallization by putting it in an ice bath. So get a bucket of ice and add some water to it. You wanna have an ice slash water slurry. If later you're gonna do a rinse, then you can put some of your rinse solvent, in this case water, inside of the ice bath. But most importantly, put your solution in the ice bath and let it sit there at least five minutes. And then what you would do next is recover the solid using suction filtration.